In this multidimensional world, much of which is invisible to the eye, a group of non-physical entities have come here to expand our knowledge of how the universe works. These non-physical teachers are called Joshua, and they convey their teachings through Gary Temple Bodley. Each week, Gary, with a selection of Law of Attraction experts, open up a roundtable of thought-provoking discussions surrounding the teachings of Joshua. Joshua's intention is to bring clarity to the listeners through the ever-expanding Law of Attraction by looking at reality from a new perspective. Welcome to the teachings of Joshua Roundtable. Hello everyone, this is episode 22 of the Teachings of Joshua Roundtable. I'm your host, Gary Temple Bodley. Today it's March 12th, 2016. We just got back from the Law of Attraction cruise and I have to say it was amazing. I'm still feeling the joy of that cruise. There were so many wonderful people who were vibrating at a super high level. It was just great to be with them. Some incredible things happened on that cruise, so make sure you don't miss the next one. Jules is planning another cruise uh, this fall in the Caribbean. I can't wait for that one. So today we're going to talk about breaking through old patterns of thinking. How do we get stuck thinking the same old thoughts? Are these old thoughts keeping us from what we want to do? Today we're going to find out. On the show today we have Steve Finitza. Hi, Steve. Hey, Gary. And Michael Cudson. Hi, Michael. Hey, Gary. And Janine Kodakovich, who just got in on the red eye this morning. Hi, Janine. Hi, Gary. We're so glad you were here with us. I didn't think you were going to make it. I, I did. I wouldn't miss it. I did think she was going to make it. <laughs> I know. You guys, yeah. you guys thought she was going to make it. I couldn't even imagine that. Two That's hours right. sleep, and I'm here with yeah. you guys and happy to be, be here. And you sound more Janine awake is than the me. MVP here. <laughs> yeah. I no agree. question. You, do, you sound more awake than all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still recovering from Steve's cats. Steve's wonderful cats, by the way. <laughs> which, I, which I never saw, but they were, I, I definitely felt them. I'm, I'm allergic to cats, and um, I almost nearly died the first night, but I made it. <laughs> Gary, Gary, Gary fails to it mention... It was a manifestation event, Gary. <laughs> I know it was. I can't figure it out, though. And he failed to mention he's allergic to cats. Yeah, and Steve failed to mention he had a cat, although, actually, he did mention it in some question a long time ago. Yes. <laughs> it was so funny because well, Lily well, and I Judge going, Michael will sort out this lawsuit later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had all this plan to stay with Steve a couple nights before the cruise, and Lily and I, just like on the way to the airport, I'm thinking, does Steve have a cat? <laughs> Never even thought to ask. Not just one. Three. <laughs> yes, three. Ooh. And as soon as he told me, we're having lunch, or just about to walk in to have lunch on the way to his house from the airport. And I'm like, by the way, do you have a cat? And he said, yeah, I have three of them. And I immediately felt all the symptoms of that allergy to cats. But it was fun. You made, you made <laughs> it was one great night. meeting Roman and Sienna uh, and Martina in person. Yes. They're just some cool people. Um, all right, well, let's get started, and then we'll talk about the cruise and stuff, but uh, let's get started with a quote. Janine, do you have that? I do. Your beliefs are mirrored back to you by the life experiences that unfold daily. Joshua. Okay, <clears throat> so that just says, right, that what you believe shows up in your reality. If you have positive beneficial beliefs, that's going to be reinforced in your reality, and mostly that's what comes in your reality. Most of the good stuff that in your life, 99% of your life is good stuff. And because you believe it, it shows up. Uh, but then there's some limiting beliefs. And, you know, if you believe in something that, that uh, doesn't support what you want, that's going to show up too. It's going to, if you believe something and think it's fact, you're going to see evidence of that stuff. But if you can lower the intensity of that limiting belief, then it'll slowly start to not show up, and actually your whole life shifts. So Joshua here is just saying, be aware of what you believe, what you consider a fact. If it supports what you want, that's a good thing. Keep believing it. But if it's limiting in any way, then you can rethink it. And the interesting thing about a limiting belief, which is always based in an irrational fear, so if the belief is limiting, it's based in an irrational fear, and it's always, always false. You can prove it false every single time, which is very interesting. So no matter what the belief is, if it's limiting, it's false. 
All right. <clears throat> um, so we just got back from a great cruise. What did you guys think of the cruise? Go ahead, Jenny. Well, I think it was amazing. I, I can't tell you the experiences that – you know, we all shared together. They're just being with like-minded people, meeting new people, just feeling like we were one. And it was just, it was actually very powerful um, and and special. And one seminar was better than the next. Gary, I do want to say you did an amazing job. Gary kicked off um, the first day doing his seminar, which was absolutely amazing. And then Steve and I got to join him the following day. Um, but it was just really to be with like-minded people. It, like you mentioned in the opening, we were just vibrating at a really high level. And it was just, I had one amazing experience after another. It yeah, was like I, a so. very loving atmosphere too. And I, I, I just feel blessed to have met so many people. And um, we shared stories and, and fun times and laughter. And it was amazing. What did you think, Steve? I loved sitting there like at dinner and just uh, sitting next to different people and just feeling instantly like non-judged. I could say whatever I wanted, you know, and nobody would think I was weird or whatever. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I too found that, you know, that we were able to share experiences like openly and not only were we able to share them, but they also could very much relate and had their own stories to go around them. And I think Gary, I think um, Steve, you and I did the same thing and we kind of had several large tables and we just like moved around and had the opportunity to meet a lot of new people. You know, I've been on a, um, a bunch of things like this, uh, you know, Abraham Land Cruise and things like that. And the, the energy of being with people who are like-minded is so powerful because in our day-to-day -day lives, we sort of limit what we're saying to people based on what we think they're going to think about what we're saying. But in this group, we could actually say what we think is important. And it was really interesting. You know, you're, there was no small talk. Everything was big talk, you know. <clears throat> I mean, okay, so we talked about the waves a little bit. <laughs> that was a little <laughs> obvious. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, there wasn't that little stuff you, you're thinking of things to say. It was always this big stuff, like what's your passion? How did you get into this? Um, you know, What's what's it like back at home and things like that? It was so cool, and you know, I got some really deep, serious conversations with people that I had just met. The same was, here, the same yeah. here, and it was just a very safe environment where you just were free to be yourself and say whatever in a very non-judgmental way. And like I said, and the people elaborated on it, or they said, "Wow, that's no coincidence," because you know, you'd bring up a topic and then they couldn't elaborate upon it and and also draw upon some of their experiences. Yeah, it just kept feeding itself because we were at such a high vibration. And then yeah. um, I realized that I really didn't have – I was completely busy the whole time. I was never a moment of boredom from the time I woke up to the time I went to sleep, even so much that I never had a chance to go pick out any of the photos that people said were some good photos of me. I forgot to – never had a chance to go get them. Oh, you didn't? I no. saw them, Gary. They really did come out very good. Yeah, I don't know um, if I can. But I, I feel the same way. I feel like, um, you know, I didn't get very much sleep at all, and that's okay because we were having way too much fun yeah. to worry about sleeping. I just did enough to get through to the next day. I don't know where your energy comes from, Janine. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you have some secret. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just have it. I just have it. Well, I think when I when I get in that zone and I love what I'm doing, I have right. like zero concept of time. And I was like, right. fine, because even though I had the late nights, um, you know, like after dinners, we, you know, we would go to shows and comedians or dancing or to listen to music and the casino. We did so many great things. And then I'd be like, oh, wow, wait, it's one thirty, It's 2.30. And, you know, we're going to be up at 8, you know, but it yeah. didn't matter. It was so much fun. I know. Um, also, there were some good speakers, too. Um, you know, I really loved Constance and Cassie and Richard Harper. They were all fantastic. Um, and <clears throat> one of the speakers were these brothers, the Biggleson brothers, Adam and Joshua, which is funny. Uh, we'll go to that in a second. But they talked about holographic blood. And that was really interesting to me. I had that book where I can't remember his name uh, right now. But he would take water and put it into a, a um, jar or something that had the label, like love, on it. Then he would take a drop of that water and freeze it and would turn it into a crystal. And the crystal would – and he would take a picture of the crystal. 
And so when it was love and joy and things like that, these crystals were absolutely beautiful. And when it was hate and despair and misery, the crystals were all convoluted and, and obviously, you know, twisted and not appealing. It was a complete contrast. You can get that book. Or you can probably go online and see all these pictures too. Super interesting. Well, their father developed the system where you could take a tiny bit of blood and put it in a, under a special microscope. And from there, you can these images would come up. And that was like one of the most fascinating things I ever saw. It really was. I did that with them. And it was amazing the things they saw. It, so you, you, know, did, at first, you did your own blood. I did. I did. I, um, I was able to do that on board with them. And, you know, like the very first thing they said is they just like looked at me because they were really surprised. They're like, you have happy dancing red blood cells. And I was like, so good <laughs> oh, that, to hear. Oh, that's a big surprise. I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> but Ooh, then some of <laughs> but then some amazing things showed up in it. Like you could, it, it was unbelievable. He's like, huh. He's like, all of a sudden you like, not only could you see like emotions in it, but you could also see like, um, like he said, I, I could clearly see there was an ear in it. I'm like, and he, and I weighed it. He, they tell you, don't say anything to us. They don't want to know. So they right. tell you what's going on. And I was like, oh. And he's like, anything going on with your ear? And I'm like, oh, I had my, I had my hole stitched up. And he's like, ah. And, you know, I told him I d recently did that with a plastic surgeon. And he was like, oh. And he goes, and he goes, uh, he goes, um, one of your knees is inflamed. I was like, funniest thing it is. <laughs> I've been wearing heels every night. And I just noticed it was like with all the rocking of the boat. It's just bothering me just a little bit. Of course, it's gone already because, you know, I was held yeah. holding the intention it was going away. But he saw some like interesting things. He's like, like, did you ever break your wrist? And I'm like, uh, two times, you know, so Whoa. when I was a kid. So it was amazing the stuff that showed up in these things. It's, it, it was unbelievable. Michael, what it is, is <clears throat> the picture of the blood and you see the blood cells. Right. And then on top of it will be this image that looks like, in, like if it was a bone, it looked like a wrist bone. And if the wrist bone had been broken, there'd be a slice in it, like where it was broken. Wow. Or if it was a uh, problem with a spine, there was one that was, that it looked like someone's spine. In this picture of blood, right, there was this image of a spine, and there was a little thing around the lower disc, and, a, and that was a bulging disc on the spine. Almost like an x-ray, but it's, it's, an, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of your blood through a microscope, these things are showing up. It's a special microscope. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, and it's got a, it's got a, la it's using a laser interference pattern to bring these things out. They just, right. they're not It's there, not, but, yeah. not visible in normal microscopes. Yeah, I'm uh, glad you brought that up, Steve, because I, I wasn't quite sure how to um, verbalize that. But it was interesting because they could see past things and they also can see current things. Like they also saw my sinuses were slightly inflamed. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm allergic to dust. And I kind of feel like, you know, just like being on the boat and stuff in the cabin that they're just aggravated a little bit. Or on the ATV. <laughs> That's in a cloud too. of dust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about you guys. But we had a really great time in Ensenada. We took um, ATVs out in the wine country, which was amazing, right, guys? It was yeah, just it was so much fun. So much fun. Yeah, such a it nice was winery. I couldn't believe oh, it. Oh, my God. It was, it was like being in Napa. Yeah. In, yeah. Exactly. In, I didn't even know Mexico had wine. Yeah. It was either. so, so pretty. But I don't know if you guys ever look down, but sometimes when, like, I don't know if the speedometers were right, but, like, we were hauling at 57 miles an hour. They were and kilometers. They were but, kilometers. Yeah, yeah. kilometers, I meant. Kilometers. Yeah. yeah, it was fast, though, <laughs> I to go to on 60, 18. I got up to 68 once. I, I got you to got 64. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you? Well, I just well, noticed, I'm like, 57, 58. I'm having the fast this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so much fun, but I did notice, like, on the way back, we stopped halfway through to get a drink and then when we got back on them i totally didn't realize i didn't put my glasses back on and then oh, if you guys yeah. remember going back it was like we went more extreme like a lot right. of hills and a lot of dust and turns and all yeah. of a sudden i'm like why can't i see i felt like i was in like a ball of like just you know dust and then i realized oh my gosh i have absolutely no goggles or glasses on but you know when you're going that fast you're not going to stop and put them on no, so i just stop. i just drove no. on through <laughs> It was so much wow. fun, though. So, it sounds like so much fun. How was Pam Grout? Okay, well, let's go on to Joshua first. Um, okay. 
So oh I yeah, was, him. Or yeah, them. I was not not that Joshua. There's so one of the Biggleson brothers, the Blood Brothers, is named Joshua. He asked a question, and we did his question on the cruise. So Joshua answered his question, and then later that day we had another um, workshop, and where we were answering people's questions, and Joshua's was one of them. But the cool thing is, when I normally get questions from Joshua, I don't know the people, and this time. We got to know the person, so it'll be interesting to see what you guys think of this answer after, you know, hearing Joshua's story when he was talking about the blood. So, um, Steve, will you read the question, and then I'll, uh, and then uh, Michael will read the answer. Yes. Uh, I had it up here. <laughs> it's coming up. There we go. Okay, maybe I am I more it. awake than you, Steve. No yes, <laughs> you are. Dear Joshua, I've been making significant changes to try to break old patterns of thinking. I feel like I'm missing a crucial block that I haven't been able to identify and work through. Any input or information would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Joshua. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and Michael, would you read the answer? Yes. There we go. Dear Joshua, in reality, you have total control over your thoughts in each moment. You can choose to think any thought you like. Having a habit of thought that feels difficult to break is due to your belief about the nature of thought itself. You believe that all thoughts are created by you. This is not true. All thoughts exist, and your vibration dictates which thoughts you have access to in any moment. Change your vibration, and the quantity and quality of thoughts and ideas that you can access will also change. So this is a huge leap in understanding how thoughts work that I don't think anyone on the cruise knew. Did you know that? Did, were you, what do you guys think? Did people know this or not know this? I felt they didn't know it. They did not know it? Yeah. Okay, right. That's what I thought, too. Uh, and certainly, you know, uh, Josh and Adam aren't really in this law of attraction thing as much as we are. Um, so they certainly didn't know it. And a lot of other people didn't know it either. Um, but once you realize that the thoughts that you have access to is come stems from your emotional state of being and you know, your sort of attitude and approach to life and all sorts of things like that, and your vibration, obviously, <clears throat> you can pay attention to how you're being, what thoughts you're thinking, and try and raise your vibration to get access to other thoughts. But if you find yourself, like Joshua does, in a uh, old pattern of thinking, it's because he's maintaining the same old vibration. And We'll talk more about this because we heard him on stage talking, and you guys, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Um, what he, the stuff he was talking about on stage? Oh yes, about yeah. the, the resistive. Uh, oh yeah. So, yeah. So this is why it's interesting, okay. and we'll I'll go and explain a little bit more of that. Okay, Michael, go on to the second paragraph. You got it. So then, how does one change their vibrations so that they may access higher level thoughts and ideas? It has a lot to do with your emotional state of being and how you perceive yourself in this reality. Let's start with your emotional state of being. Keep going? Yep. Okay. When you are feeling good, you have access to thoughts that align with what you want and who you really are. That is why we say it is important to feel good. When you are in an emotional state of joy, happiness, appreciation, bliss, excitement, etc., you have access to a full range of thoughts and ideas. You are a vibrational match to ideas that move you along toward receiving what you want. However, when you feel anger, sadness, disappointment, frustration, unworthiness, insecurity, etc., you have found yourself in a lower emotional state of being and access to higher level thoughts is limited. The thoughts you most often access at these lower vibrations are thoughts that match how you're feeling. So when um, Josh and Adam were speaking, they were talking a lot about 
their father, who started this um, method, it's called the Bigelson Method, that looks at your blood and can identify what your blood is really working on. And it also goes that uh, to say that disease is not caught by stuff outside of you. The disease is created within you because you have this um, terrain that is either healthy and therefore completely uh, not a good place for disease to start, flourish, or you have this uneasy, unhealthy you know, environment in your body where disease flourishes, uh, which is, you know, and they showed how Pasteur is the one who came up with the idea that you're being com- constantly attacked by things outside of you. But there's a whole range of scientists who thought at the same time as Pasteur that everything is in, with, in the body. And vibrationally speaking, that's what we believe as well. That Joshua will tell you that everything is attracted and it's all based on, on what's going on inside of you. You cannot catch a cold if you are not vibrationally matched to that cold. If you catch a cold, then it's telling you that you need to slow down or something's going on there that's a mix. And that's a good message to get as well. So <clears throat> their father was attacked by the establishment his whole life, pretty much. And just prior to this cruise, their clinic was raided and shut down. And Josh had this, you know, was very angry about it, was grief-stricken by it. And now they're in the process of moving everything to Mexico so they can continue working in a friendly country. Um, But he was really focused on what he perceived as wrong. It's wrong of the establishment to attack his father. It's wrong of the establishment to shut them down. He's doing so much good, and there's so much um, positive stuff going on with his work. If they would just listen and understand, they could see the benefit of it, but all they want to do is push pills. So that was his basic whole being. And you could see, I did anyway, um, that's what was holding him back. Did you guys see that as well? Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I I would say I did too, definitely, especially all through the presentation and everything. But then when, um, you know, we're out on the, I guess, in international waters, you know, and he's able to, was able to do some consults with people, I think they were like validated in what they're doing because. Oh, yeah, they're absolutely like, validated. Yeah. yeah dinner not- conversation, like everybody's experiences were unbelievable. Like yeah. when I said, oh my gosh, he totally knew something was, you know, done to my earlobe. Um, I as I'd had recently had it stitched up because the white blood cells were like going to that area. And he's like, you need to break up the scar tissue, you know, which is actually the plastic surgeon told me to do that. So it's something I should have probably continued to, to do a little more, but yeah, I think so they were validated. Was, when he was focused on the work itself, Mm-hmm. Not the bigger picture of what was wrong. He was totally aligned with who he really is and what he wants to do, you know. And you could see that. His energy was completely different. But when he was talking about the frustration of the business aspect of it or the medical establishment of it or how the whole country is, you know, swept up in, you know, in um, pills and ph- big pharma, his energy was really low. In fact, he wasn't even speaking deeply. We had to keep saying, Talk, talk, talk. We can't hear you. Yeah. Um, It was very apparent. Yeah. Adam, on the other side, who was more removed from it, it didn't affect him personally, was, was, had a very high energy and was focused on the good of this and how interesting it was and how much, how cool his father was and stuff. And you could just see the two differences in their, in their vibration. So, you know, when you get stuck in these old thought patterns, it's basically because you're, thinking that something happened or something is happening that was wrong. And when you build up resentment, you are focusing on the wrong of something. It's an inner conflict. It causes stress on the body. You lower your vibration. You lower your whole energy field. And you cannot get out of that. You will be stuck. You know, you just keep repeating those same thoughts of what was wrong. Then you get evidence of what was wrong because you believe that that was wrong. And more and more wrong stuff happens to you. So to break through of that, you just actually have to look at the thing you thought was wrong and realize that it's right. You have to find out a way to perceive it in a way that makes you feel good. And you can, in this instance, he could simply say, <clears throat> everything that is happening is causing a shift in the consciousness of health in this country. 
by them shutting us down and, and us popping up, it inspires us to teach other people. So they're going all across the world teaching other people how to do the exact same thing, and it's, it's causing them to broaden this. So if, you, if they had chosen or if um, Josh had chosen to see this in a positive light, he would lose that um, old patterns of thought. He'd have access to higher thoughts, and he'd move closer to what he really wants instead of being stuck. So this is a super interesting question. This is why I thought it'd be great to bring it up on the cruise because I had about 12 questions and I really thought this one would talk to a lot of people. So um, so the emotional state of being really dictates what access, you know, if you're angry, your thought, the first thought that comes to you is that you need to punch something, right? And that's not going to help you. So you can see how the emotional state of being attracts the thoughts. It does help you, kind of. Well, it helps you. <laughs> Not really, though. Well, right. If you punch or, something, or, or a scream, it makes you feel better. But you know, it is it is a thought that helps you, and that's why that thought comes. Yeah, because it comes to make you feel better. But it's not the high vibrational thought that you're looking for. Exactly. Right. Okay. Right, and I will say, Gary, right. that we notice a shift in Joshua after his question was answered, and after he was validated by all his. Um, so he was a much different person, let's say, on day one than he was on day five of the cruise. Absolutely. Totally true. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. He was totally alive and enthusiastic on that last day. All right. <clears throat> so okay. let's go on to the next paragraph. You got it. Okay. Your habit of thought stems from a chronically lower emotional state of being. Work on really feeling better. Work on really feeling good, and you'll find that the blocks have been removed. Okay. Um, this, and that's true of everyone. I'm working with some people right now, and um, um, as they are realizing for the first time in their lives that the importance of feeling good, they're starting to get this inspiration. They're starting to see things happening. They're starting to see you know, the number four on a clock, 444. They're starting to... Um, have people call them out of the blue and offer them things. There's really a lot of stuff is happening because they're they're aligning with this idea to feel good as much as possible. And so they're um, so that is you know you can never overstate how important that is. All right, now let's yeah. go to the next paragraph. Yeah, I was about to say, if nothing else, it certainly makes life a lot more fun. Yeah, I mean it's obvious seems obvious that you should feel good just because it feels good, right? right. But there's also another benefit to it. It's a, it's a momentum thing that keeps you, as, as, more, as you feel good more of the time, more good things start to happen, and you feel more good, and more good, you know, more good happens, and you feel even better, and it gets better and better and better and better, until eventually you're at this place where you're not fighting with anything. You're allowing everything, and things just start to happen that are miraculous and then you look back two years and you, and you go my god things have changed well that's great and i'm looking forward to that <laughs> let me read that let me let me read the next part now okay okay the second part of the answer to your question deals with how you personally perceive yourself in this reality in reality you are a conscious and fully aware being of pure positive love who you really are is one who is free of fear. You are worthy and unique. You are the creator of your reality, and your powers of creation are absolute. However, you perceive yourself to be less than this, and you compare yourself to others who you feel are more worthy than you. This is true for most people. Stop comparing yourself to others and start comparing yourself to you. The current version of you is the finest and most evolved you that has ever existed. When you look back at a past version of you, you can see the growth that has taken place. You are evolving. Realize that this world has been designed for your personal expansion and you are the only one who really matters. Think thoughts that align with this version of you. Believe that you are constantly evolving, improving, and raising your vibration. As you begin to realize just how powerful you really are, and you perceive yourself as a confident creator, 
Then you'll access thoughts that align with this perception. Joshua. So that last paragraph is true for everyone. That in this moment, everyone is the most evolved version of, the, of themselves. And as long as you start comparing yourself to your past self, you can see the improvement, but when you compare yourself to others who you believe are better or more worthy than you, you're going to see the the um, difference between you. The difference between where you perceive yourself to be and where you perceive them to be. And you just don't know how to get to there from where you are. So you can't compare yourself to others because you your perception of them is unique to you. You don't really know what's going on with them. You just have this idea of them. So you always you have to stop comparing yourself to others. Now, something happened on the cruise to me. Jules wanted to do a hypnosis with me. And so I go to her cabin. She lies me down. And she says, what I want to do is bring out Joshua in speaking. And I'm like, this isn't going to happen. We've been doing this for two years. It's, uh, you know, if Joshua's going to speak, Joshua would have spoken by now. And she says, well, let's just try it and see what happens. So she puts me under. It takes me a count of 10 before I get really relaxed. <clears throat> And she just simply asked Joshua a question. Joshua comes right through. Boom. It was unbelievable. Didn't think it would ever happen. But all of a sudden, I'm speaking, and it's Joshua coming through. Was it, so, was it a different – did you sound different, or was it just – Okay. So you see how I sound now? Yes. So I'm mm-hmm. sort of high energy, fast talker, um, you know, a lot of ums and stuff like that, searching for the, the words because I'm talking so fast, um, loud. So Joshua was – Slow, measured, and soft. Completely opposite of me. Um, Almost a little boring. It was so slow. So when I see that boring compared to Esther channeling Abraham, I can't see how I'm going to get to that level from here. Except that later on that night, I had a vision of me on stage speaking like I am now with this high energy, but coming out as Joshua and being very clear and being able to find the words. Now, I think a a little bit of that happened when I gave my presentation because I had practiced this presentation that I was going to do on the boat with Steve and his wife Martina, and we did it in my hotel room, and it was like a mess, I thought. And I'm like, oh, and it was the only time I ever practiced it, really. Um, But then we got on the boat, and in front of the 50 or 60 or so people, uh, 50 people who were there, um, it just all came together, and I was receiving thoughts that I had never thought of before. I was at this really high, powerful emotional state, and everything came out absolutely perfect. I couldn't have imagined it being any better. And not only did it, everything come out absolutely perfect, Gary, and many people, because they know I'm on the round table with you, came up to me when you were not even near me and say, I really enjoyed his presentation and I really relate it. And he was funny in, his, in, like, in your delivery. And so you did an amazing job for, you know, for not having practiced it. Uh, you know, everyone got it right away and you did it in just a way that was like, you know, you, you just really captured your audience and their attention. So. Yeah, and I think the things that I did was I intended to um, be aligned while I was doing it, and I was in a very – I was not worried about it. So I was in a high emotional state of being. I had this idea that it would work, um, even though I didn't prepare as much as I should have, but I was confident. And so then that emotional state of being – was high enough to so that I accessed these higher thoughts and everything came through. Um, so there's there's the two aspects of this question in me. On one side, I was, you know, access to higher thoughts by being in a high emotional state, and the other side, I'm comparing myself to Esther, who I think is unbelievably great and fabulous, and I can't imagine being as good as her. But I got to compare myself to you know a week ago where I wasn't even speaking. So. There's going to be some progress made here in the future, and I just have to believe that it's coming. I'm really looking forward to it personally. I think so, too. I think mm-hmm. you, you and me can go on the road, and we'll do uh, – and whoever wants to come, we'll do presentations all over the country. We can do it on the radio program here. I'd love That's it to be right. talking to Joshua right now. Yeah, see? I can't even imagine that. <laughs> yeah, that, that can't, we're tired of you. We want Joshua. I know, right? I can't <laughs> yeah. even imagine that. So um, Jules and I are going to do some Skype hypnosis and we'll see if that works. And then maybe one day we'll do um, Joshua on the radio. Very cool. 
Right. But and you also, you know, of course you can't compare yourself to Esther because she's been doing it for years. Thirty years or something, right? Thirty <clears throat> or yeah. something. The connection is so strong at this point. Yeah. Um right. you're doing this how long? Two years. So the, the yeah, inter- so, so so another you know in twenty eight years you can <laughs> yeah that's exactly you're, right you you, you can look back myself. and see whether you you could look back and see where you stand twenty eight years if 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 you were silly enough to I even could be eighty in twenty eight years <laughs> <laughs> oh that's okay you know on the on the cruise for me it was amazing because uh like Gary as we were talking about earlier I met so many like minded people. So you guys know, I work a lot with angels and calling in my angels, but like some of the dinner part of the, the dinner conversations we have were amazing. Like other people that were sharing their angel stories. And then when I got back to LA, a friend took me to, um, and Steve, you might have to help me with this area, but it was called Wafers Chapel. And it was like a um, Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, his son was the architect there and it's very famous in Palo Verdes, is it? Palos Verdes. Yes. And it was absolutely amazing. They had this beautiful little store. So I go in. Of course, what am I drawn to is the, um, this beautiful book with like angel wings and um, like glitter and purple. And it's so funny because everything I bought on this trip was purple. When the guys and I went to the winery, I was picking purple jewelry. Everything was purple. So I buy this this angel words book. Um It was by Doreen Virtue. And just now, coming home on the red eye, this very nice girl from London was sitting behind me. And just as we're getting off the cruise, she hands me my angel book that I was fully intending to read on board, which I didn't. Um, She said, excuse me, is this your book? And I said, it is. She goes, I feel like an angel wanted me to give this to you. And she's a young (laughs) girl. She was in her early 20s. She goes, "I, I hope you don't mind, but I picture text it this so I can buy it and she goes isn't it serendipitous I said yeah it really is (laughs) and then and then with that being said, she asked us, she, I, I told her, I said, wow, there's no coincidences. We were just talking about that on board and talking about God instances. And so I told her about the podcast and she's like, can you write it down here for me? I'm going to be listening to you guys. And it was just amazing. One thing leads into the next. Everyone's all connected. We're all one, really. Yep, that's right. That was just a coincidence, Janine. <laughs> a God instance. Random it was life. definitely. You're, <laughs> you're such a killjoy, Steve. Pure <laughs> randomness. <laughs> Uh, well, I, happen to, I actually happen to have the uh, Doreen Virtue Angel Therapy Handbook right next to me here. Wow. Uh, see? I told you. There you go. Got instances. <laughs> Michael, what happened to you this week? Let's see. What happened to me this week? You know what? Since I saw you guys or spoke to you guys last, uh, my family or my wife and my daughter and I went to uh, see a college. We, uh, she was accepted to this particular college. She just, uh, we've never seen it before. It, one, of her, one of her deans told us that uh, it would be a good college for her to apply to. So while you guys were off being rocked and rolled on the oceans, we had a really nice trip down, uh, down to New Jersey. We saw a college. And, uh, you know, I don't know whether it's for her or not. But at the very least, we had a very nice time. Was and, it Rutgers? Where's the New Jersey? What college is in New Jersey? Uh, this is called the College of New Jersey. It's actually oh, okay. it, it's a small school within the uh, state university system. Awesome. So so it's a very good school and, and not uh, too far away. No, about two and a half hours, which okay. is far which is far enough to make sure that mommy and daddy don't drop in unexpectedly on her. Right. But at the same time, if she wants us to visit or if she wants to come home, uh, she can uh, she can get on over to our, you know, we, we can get to each other very, you know, quickly enough. <laughs> so we're looking That's at the schools. best of both worlds to have right. that. Right. Well, we're looking at a bunch of schools within that general uh, realm. That's what she wanted. Good. Which which made us very happy. Yeah. So we had a very good week in that respect. And uh, some good things came about professionally this week, too. Oh, so, good. So I've been uh, I've been very positive and I've just made, you know, I've just worked at, uh, you know, it's a little bit of work, but it's uh, but I say it in the good sense of just maintaining really, really strong, positive emotions and being positive about everything. Right. And seeing the right in everything. That's right. You just get in the state of allowing and then it's going to be fun to see what flows from there. Right. I had depositions uh, two days this week, and depositions can be very, you know, typically can be very stressful. But yes. you know what? I took the attitude that 
no matter how this goes, it's going to be wonderful, and I'm, and I'm enjoying the time that I'm doing this, and it's great. I also had an appellate division argument this week, which also can be you know, very stressful, but I decided to take the attitude that, you know what, this is what lawyers live for. Right. This is this is this is you know this is it. I'm yeah. arguing in front of a, in front of a panel of judges, and yeah, they were kind of they were a little rough on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was, but I had fun with it while I was in front of them. I gave it my very best shot. I you know I, would I like to win for the client? Yes, I'd like to win for the client. But at the end of the day, I am allowing it to come, no matter what happens, and I'm not attached to the result. Right. I had fun. I right. did the best I possibly could. My client was actually there. My clients, my, uh, the husband was there. He's really my client, but the wife was there too. Uh-huh. And there was a group of students from uh, Brooklyn Law School who were uh, watching all the appellate arguments. And it, it was nice. One of my, uh, the client's wife heard a bunch of the uh, Brooklyn Law School students muttering about me. And all saying, boy, he really knows his stuff. (laughs) See, Michael, I just noticed in the last couple of weeks the shift that you've had and what you're setting your intentions and you're manifesting it. So you're just an example of that in the last couple of weeks. Do you see it? I mean, I'm sure you, Steve and Gary, see it too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. See, your vibration changed and the outcome is changing. Yeah, so it's a different attitude to look at these situations depositions and appellate um, court appearances where <clears throat> it's, it's like imagine being a football player and it's the difference between practice and game day. Game day, it can be stressful. You want to do well, but this is your time to shine. That's this right. And that, so and that was the attitude that I there. took. Yeah. I took the attitude that this is my time to shine. Don't be attached to the result, but this is my time to shine. It's game night. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's right. Or, or 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 to quote uh, or to quote Roy Scheider and all that jazz. It's showtime. <laughs> That's right, it's showtime. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and by letting go of the stress, I enjoyed it that much more. I just went in and just said, "This is going to be fun, no matter what." Right. Yeah. And that's the work. That's that's the amount of work you have to do. Right. It's just controlling your thoughts and kind of stepping in and not letting it go freewheeling on you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And not being so upset if, if the judges were tough on me, for example. Yeah. Because it can happen. Yeah, you got to kind of have to be on a stable platform. You can't that's get right. knocked off a little bit. Right. And sometimes I've been guilty, you know, for, you know, for the benefit of my clients, I've been guilty of getting emotionally involved with it or emotionally attached with the, uh, with the result. And I probably, in certain ways, I probably did better being a little more detached. Having fun, Absolutely. but being a little more detached from the result. Here's an interesting um, analogy to that, or something that happened similar to me, is that I got, when we were doing the presentation, Pam Grout was sitting right to my right, closer than anyone else. And I would turn to her, and I was getting nothing from her. The rest of the people were, it felt like they were in, totally engaged with me. But then I would turn to her, nothing, right? And even Steve, did you, you notice it too, right? Yes, I did. Right. I was hoping so, it wasn't going to knock you off your stable platform. <laughs> it didn't knock me off then because I, I was like, oh, my God, Pam Graff's going to be here. Um, I wonder what she thinks and all this stuff. And um, So anyway, so people, um, I asked them at the end of the thing that they could give me their questions to Joshua, and I would type them out and give them back to them. And then we'd talk about, one or two of them at our next workshop. That was the whole idea. So I got about 13 questions that night, and next morning I picked two and typed them out. And then at l- lunch, Pam comes over and gives me a question. And I'm going, oh, wow, that's totally, I didn't think she was going to give me one because she didn't seem interested in the seminar at all. So, But she gave me this question. I was excited by it. So I went back to my room after lunch, typed it out, and then when we, when we were on stage at 4 o'clock, um, that was one of the questions we did. Josh was in this one. And it was interesting because I was totally nervous about it the whole time. I showed it to Steve. I wasn't going to even present it. But Steve said, you got to present it because it's so powerful and it will talk to so many people. 
And um, her question was, how do I get my TV series off the ground? And Joshua's answer was talking to her like she's anyone else. Talking to her tough. It was a tough answer for her. Because it said that she wasn't satisfied with the amount of success that she had. And she was wanting to get more success. And she thought that this specific avenue by having a TV series would be the, the thing that gives her more success gives her that feeling of more success. Because even after having two super successful books, Josh was saying that she didn't feel like a successful person. In other words, she didn't feel worthy. And so she's attempting to feel worthiness by more and more success, right? Instead of acknowledging that she is worthy. So this is something that I would not say to someone who's super successful, but Josh could care less. And so in this presentation of it, I was totally nervous about it and you could see it in my presentation because I wasn't talking confidently at all or at least I didn't think so um, and and at the end she said something that was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> well she kind of like flippantly kind of dismissed it like oh that didn't apply to me I was She's, what she said was what I was really looking for was someone's phone number <laughs> like Josh <Josh's, laughs> like, you know <laughs> a producer's phone number you know, and I, like, I, oh I, my I, god! I imagine she was kidding. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, it didn't look like she was kidding. What do you think, Janine? Ooh. Hmm. You know, I just remember after that, I kind of brought up the fact that, like, my first question to Joshua, I got an answer, and I wasn't sure what I thought of it really. But then when I, d Gary, you know this, and then we resubmitted the question, I got the exact answer that resonated with me. So yeah. sometimes it takes a little more delving in. That's um, absolutely and, right, you know, and, and this is the thing about writing a question. If you don't ask follow-up questions, you, it's hard to get in one, you know, 1,200-word answer. Right. Uh, I will tell you that second – in my situation, that second question, it was crystal clear. Everything resonated. I, like, I couldn't agree more. I remember writing you back immediately. I'm like – I'm like, thank Joshua. For, this was amazing. Like, I totally everything. I everything in that second answer was was spot on, and I understood it. It resonated with me. It brought me to another level and mm -hmm. um, a, a, another that. level of understanding. And and I will say, not only another level of understanding, but immediately my vibration changed. And that's the benefit of being, you know, on stage or talking live with, like Esther does. And unlike writing it, Esther can ask follow-up questions, and the person can ask more questions, and, and they can go back and forth and have a conversation. And that's how people get it, I think, a lot of times, especially in the audience, too. Um, and we have that see, to look forward to. We yeah, do. we have that to look forward to. So we can see some things in the answers are nice when they're written because you can reread it and stuff, but you really have to ask follow-up questions. And that's why the one-on-one -on -one program is so effective. Well, Pam. You know, with, with Pam, I, it was kind of amazing because um, she signed a book for me after her presentation. And I, w I was like a little taken back because I was like, well, of course, Gary um, and Steve and I did like the second day. Gary did the presentation of the original one, the day one on there himself, which was amazing. And then he after receiving the questions, then we did what we it would almost be like a live radio show. So the right. three of us were up there and um you know, at that particular time, I, you know, I've, I just interjected a little bit. You know, we all had our things to say. Steve did, Gary did, I did. And then after Pam's seminar and I asked her to sign the book, you know, she thanked me for being there and she thanked me for the work I was doing. It kind of oh, like, that's I, cool. Yeah. I go, <laughs> Kelly was sitting next to me. I'm like, Kelly, can you read this? Does this really say that? Like, it was just like, to me, that was so amazing that, you know, this New York Times bestselling author is thanking me for the work that, you know, I, I just, I just, I was taken back by that a little bit. But yeah. then I was also like, she's just like all of us. We all have our questions and we all are evolving and we're all coming into our own and you know yes. it just made me realize how real she was too yeah. and it reminded I think me of um when wayne dyer was talking to to uh, abraham on stage yes. you can really see how wayne dyer you know how much like a high figure he is in all this was just like us Yes, and I, I recently watched that video because my sister Chris lent it to me, so I know exactly what you're saying. And I keep yeah. bringing this up, but I was in the audience. Yeah, oh, that's right, Steve. Oh. Steve, I'm going to rewatch that tape and see, see where I can find, find you. you. How many years ago was that? I don't. I'm going to say three or four. 
it, no, I was going like to say two or it, three, yeah. it yeah. couldn't have been that long ago because right. he it, he looked very similar yeah. to before he passed. So, well, I just wanted to add that Pam's question and answer was perfect for me. I mean, I got so much out of it because I think it speaks to all of us on our our worthiness travels. Um, there's always going to be this leap of faith that you take that you're worthy, and because I'm always looking externally, like oh, a little bit more. Because you get it, right? You get feedback that that you're worthy, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. And but but if you, you could, oh, it's a hamster wheel. You can always wait for more. Oh, I need a little bit more. I need a little bit more. Instead of just kind of taking that little leap across the chasm, and going, okay, I am. And then and you can always there. find evidence to support the fact that you're not worthy too. Yeah, that's you, true. You it's, can perceive things yeah. that that just prove you're not worthy. It's, um, <laughs> It's wherever you're but, at at yeah. that date. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then, and then, jo- like Steve, Joshua's answer was specifically tailored for Joshua and specifically tailored for Pam. Yet, isn't it amazing how, how many of us out there hearing it can, um, can relate? Cause it, like you said, that spoke to you. I'm sure yeah, that it spoke to many other to audience me. members. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why that it, the conversations with Steve book, I'm thinking, only I would be interested in that, right? Because it was my questions, but apparently other people. Uh, Everyone get, loves get, that thing. Get stuff yeah. out well, of it. So. I can't wait to put it well, out there. Well, <laughs> one of your first things wasn't that the cheat sheets. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, cheat codes. The, the cheat codes. The I, cheat codes to life. I, the cheat codes to life. And right. I mean, obviously that shared with so many people, That's even almost, though it was uh, intended for you. Right. Well, Janine, I'm looking at your laminated thing. It's on my bed. It's on the head of my bed with a magnet up on the wall, so I, I can yeah. read it anytime I you want. You know, I did that. I, I did. I um, I great. laminated them for Gary and Steve and I. And, Michael, I have one for you. I can put it in the mail. And um, oh, so okay. I just made a handful of them. And you know what? I thought, well, those – because, honestly, those – it's if you had a, like, even – a miniature one that would fit in like a wallet that would be like awesome well, to just be... like gently remind yourself you mm-hmm. know pull those out and reread them that would be micro print but yes yeah. i get what you're saying <laughs> yeah what is the, um what is the this? cheat codes are on the website oh, this is look, the cheap codes the cheat codes of life yeah right that was what the presentation was and uh if you go to the website under articles just look for cheat codes and it's all there I've read it, and I've also heard your uh, broadcasts on it before I joined the roundtable, and they're great. Oh, that was a good show, and that's the most – it was turned into an article, too, and it's the most popular article. Right. Um, and yeah, it's all thanks to Steve. Well, right. well and, and I think Joshua had something to do with it, too. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, it would never have come out. <laughs> <Okay>. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and didn't you publish that, or didn't uh, Jules publish that in the – Yeah, that, uh, it's been in a lot of magazines, magazine? actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Been everywhere. Cool. Um, all right. We've well, got- it was so nice to meet Jules, and I'm so happy to hear that um, they're going to have another cruise in the fall. She's planning Jules one. That's was gonna- awesome, wasn't she? She is. She's an like- amazing. She's connected- an amazing person. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm yeah. hoping to get. Uh, she's local to me, and I'm. I didn't get a chance to get hypnotized by her on the boat, but I'm hoping I can drive out there and uh, maybe get a session with her. Are there any uh, cool roads you can drive on? There's an there? amazing yeah. road that goes <laughs> straight out there. Yes. Or take a highway, the one we went over. It keeps Michael, going. S- Steve Just- took me on this road called or take a highway, which goes over the mountains or the, uh, the I guess they're mountains, big hills. And it's twisty and turny and there's cliffs on both sides. And he's we're in his Lotus Elise and going so fast around these corners that you just Oy. No, you're going to die. There's no question. There's not <laughs> a possibility that you're going to survive this. And it also seems like he's, you know, I'm there. He's trying to show off. Now, I know that he's a fantastic driver and he, he's totally safe and he's done this lots of times. But it just feels like a guy trying to show off. <laughs> and how, we're like, oh, how, no, we're going to die. Was it was the scariest thing I ever did in my whole life. Yeah, but yeah, that's just Steve and who he is. Like he has that need. Like he, that's exhilarating for him. Because I even noticed on the ATV tour, even though he was out in front of everyone going so much faster, all of a sudden he just lagged back and he's like, "Go!" And then he was at the end and let everybody do your thing. And then he could fishtail and do whatever he wanted and be like, "That's the kid in him comes out." It's amazing. I loved it. No, you can tell fun. that's your passion and that's, that's your joy. It. Yes, I could right. see it. I saw it like in front of my eyes. I mean, so I'm I didn't ride come, that, right? I don't think you guys expected. You were great, Janine. You were a pro. <laughs> it was so much fun. The, the other Gary, how was the seat? Way back there. 
Good. Gary, how was the seat? Steve said it's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. What was this? What is? Oh, the lotus oh. seat. The seat in the car. Oh, yeah. You don't even care about that. You're just happy to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> so steve when you come here i'm talking to lily what am i going to do for you that was that exciting for me when you're here when we go on the, on the next caribbean cruise yeah have to think of something yeah hmm. uh, you know i'm usually really pretty chill about things and i was at in san fran and then um two years ago and then um my friend she was very young um she well, very young. She was 21 and she like, but she drove like a nut, like going down the street of the roses and everything. I was like, Haley, yeah. can you do that one more time, a little slow this time? <laughs> and then like when we did the Pacific Coast Highway, the same thing. And like I'm Snapchatting everything and I'm doing, you know, as we're going across the bridges and all these beautiful things. And I know that fear that you had because all of a sudden, you know, I, you know, we're listening to music and she's like DJing in the car, but she's driving like a nut. And then I'm like, that's scarier. Oh, it was. And I go, Haley. I was like, watch out. And she goes, Janine, that's why my dad bought me the best Beamer ever. You know, she was like, it can stop on a dime. And I'm like, okay, but like, let's stop before we get to the edge of the cliff. You right. know? Right. See, with Steve, yeah. so, at least I know that he's super good at this. Yeah. Stuff. He's said it a million well, times. But with a random girl who's singing and texting, that's scarier. Yeah, well, no, I was doing the Snapchatting, oh, but okay, yeah. but I oh, will okay. say when she was here in Florida, she drove that very same car, which was a really nice car. But uh -huh. in front of the Jaguar dealer down, she almost like got in an accident there, and you know that's like uh, yeah, which is north, like south, sweet. east, west. It's so easy. So of right. course that happened before the trip going down the Pacific Coast Highway. So I didn't uh -huh. have a lot of confidence in right. the beginning. Well, I had confidence <laughs> with Steve. Um, all right, how are we doing on time? Well, it looks like we're at fifty-eight ten. No, fifty-six ten. That's fifty-six my, ten. My ice right. eyeballs aren't working here. All right, so we have fifty seconds. Fifty seconds. <clears throat> All right. Well, you can tell how enthusiastic we were about this cruise. It was really fun. Uh, it was way more than I expected. I didn't think it'd be like this, but it was so great. I can't wait to do it again. And so, if you guys are thinking about it. We'll do something in, in uh, maybe September, October, in Florida, in the Caribbean. I've done the Caribbean cruises a bunch of times, and there's a lot of great islands and uh, even bigger boats, and it's even more fun. All the newer boats are in the Caribbean, and all the older boats are in L.A., it seems. So we'll have some brand new boats to go in here. Um, so think about that. And until next week... I hope you guys have a wonderful week. We're going to um, get some more questions in this week. So think about what you want to talk about next week, and we'll get together then. I'd love to say goodbye to all of you. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Teachings of Joshua Roundtable with Gary Temple Bodley. We will be back next week with another fun discussion. If you would like to ask Joshua a question or read more of Joshua's teachings, please visit us at theteachingsofjoshua.com. See you next week.